Welcome back. AC lesson number 15, HVAC. I bet you can tell what the HC stands for. I bet you can figure out what the H stands for. Well, that would be heater. V, that's ventilation. The HVAC, heater, ventilation, air conditioning. Today, we do the ventilation system. The ventilation system is a big part of the air conditioning system. The good old days. Today's ventilation system. There's more to it than you might expect. The ventilation system has a few names. Air distribution duct system, case system, airflow. We'll just call it a ventilation system. First things first. How can you tell a vehicle is having a ventilation problem? Four answers. First thing, the air is coming out, out the wrong place. Of course, we're going to look at each one. The left vent is cold, the right vent is hot. On the late model dual system, one side works great and the other side doesn't. Vent temperature is hot. The air coming out the vent is hot, but suction is dripping wet cold. Well, make sure you remember how important that wet suction line is and the recirculation, how important it is for the recirculation. To work there. There is our basic control systems. Over here on the mode, M O D E, that's the name of it. And it's important that you get the name. It's the mode switch because we're going to have the mode actuator and the mode door. Right now, the mode is pointing toward the vent. You see it? And if the vent is not coming out the right place, you're having a problem with the ventilation system. It's not unusual for the air to come out the wrong place. Anytime it comes out the wrong place, there's a problem with the mode. If you haven't figured it out, inside the ventilation systems are doors. Here, you see the door? Over here, let's start on the left with the yellow arrow. There's that important word that you should remember. Mode, mode actuator, mode door, mode control. The, mo the mode co controls where the air will be coming from. If the air is not coming out the vent, because that's where we want it, there's a problem with it. Let's go on. Second answer, left vent, right vent. One works, the other one doesn't. Let me introduce to you the dual system. The driver has control, the passenger has control. How do they do that? Here is a single control. Before I explain this one, let me explain a simpler one. This is a cutaway view, one dimensional of the ventilation system. Let's start at the beginning where the air is coming from. This door, this arrow is pointing to where the air is coming in. Now the red arrow is pointing to an important door. That's not the mode door. That's the recirculation door. Right now the door is in the recirculated position, which means inside. We're not bringing air from the outside. Now, it's important that you understand it can get very comfortable inside the passenger compartment. If we're starting off in the upper 70s compared to the mid to upper 90s, it's just going to be colder. The recirculation door is important, especially here in South Texas. We have to have a functioning uh, recirculation door. Let's go on a little bit more. There they are, the blue thing and the red thing. The blue is the evaporator, the red is the heater core. On this illustration, it looks like they're actually touching. They're very, very close. That's the way the design is. It's just for simplicity. So the blue is the air conditioning, the red is the heater. That is hot, right? I'm pointing to the temperature door. 
The green arrow is pointing to the temperature door, sometimes called the blend door, air blend temperature mix door. It can have a few names. Notice where the door is positioned in this illustration. I'm going to try to move that door by using my insert features. Here I've, I'm trying to indicate that the door is now in the cold position. I'll back up. There is the door. The door is in the middle. Here is why they call it the mix or the blend because it's mixing the hot and the cold. That's the easiest way to control the temperature is by mixing the two hot, the hot and the cold. Here the door is in the cold position. Here the door is in the hot position. Here is how now we can understand the dual system. Over here on number one, that's going to the driver. And you see how the door is positioned to eliminate any of the airflow going through the heater core, thus giving us cold. Over here, this is for the passenger. This is another door, another blend door, temperature door, air mix door. Notice how the door is allowing some of the air to go through the core and now the temperature is not as cold. Yes, there's a lot of activity going on inside the ventilation systems. There's four ways to control the door. Electrically operated, cable operated, vacuum operated, and a combination. Most late model vehicles are electric. They use actuators. They use wires and circuits. Here we see the inside of some of these actuators. The round silver things on the bottom are motors. The gears are gears. The circuit board is a circuit board. Look, here we're having a problem with the actuators. Can you see the big crack on the white one? That's not working either. Now what's wrong with it? Well, the circuit board, board is burned out. All of these devices are going to wear out. I have my motor, my DC motor on the right. That silver round thing on the left, that's the motors. The motors are going to give out the circuit boards, the gears, the reduction. They're all going to mess up, right? Is it always the actuator? Usually it is, but sometimes it could be the switch. Sometimes it could be the circuit. So how do you test these actuators? Well, if you hear them clicking, more than likely it is the actuator. They should not make a clicking sound. So how do you test actuators? Nothing's easy anymore. DTCs? That stands for Diagnostic Trouble Codes. Everything has codes now. Engines, transmissions, ABS, climate control, stability, everything has Diagnostic Trouble Codes. So what do you do with that? Well, now you're going to need a Diagnostic Pinpoint Test. Then you're, you're gonna have to be knowledgeable about commanding with a scanner. You'll have to have an understanding of the electronics works. So how do you do all that stuff? Well, you take more classes. The Engine Performance Analysis 2 class that we offer, that's the scanner class. Even though it says engines, anything that you learn about scanning plugs in to all the other ones. One more thing you should know about actuators. They're not easy. In fact, they're a royal pain. They're very difficult to get to. A few of them might not be so bad, but it's not unusual for you to halfway make disassemble the dash just to get to these actuators. This is scary. This is not easy. This is not for the rookies. Yes, we've done this. Next type, the vacuum operated. Early model, that means the older vehicles was mostly but I've seen them all the way to 2005, 2006. Some vehicles still have them. It uses engine vacuum to operate the diaphragms. These diaphragms can be called servos. Here we have three of these and they're called actuators. They're vacuum diaphragms. How a vacuum diaphragm works is let's start with the yellow arrow. 
the yellow arrow is pointing to the linkage that will be connected to the door. Nothing's happening yet. The red arrow, that's pointing to where the vacuum source will be applied. When we apply vacuum, the diaphragm, atmospheric pressure will now push on it. We've been doing this for decades. We use engine vacuum to move the doors. And yes, millions and millions of vehicles have this. This is not the most common, but they're out there here and there. So you should know about it. No, that's not a wiring diagram. That's a vacuum diagram. And look, let's look at the top. Let's look at the top. It's white, dark green, light green, violet, black. What are they talking about? the vacuum hoses. These are not wires. These are vacuum hoses. They look like wires to someone that doesn't know. And these hoses go to these diaphragms. And when vacuum is applied, the diaphragm moves the lever, the lever moves the door, and the ventilation system works. Yes, there's vacuum hoses in the dash on these vehicles. We're talking about the ventilation system. And of course, there's vacuum hoses underneath the hood. But this is how you decide if you have it or you're trying to repair it. Where your air conditioning lines go in, that would be our suction and our liquid. Right there, I wish I could show it to you. This hose, it's almost always black. This size looks like this. It goes in right above or around where the AC lines go in. If you're having a problem, it's the same answer. The air is coming out the wrong place. The temperature is not correct. Let's go on some more. There's more parts to the ventilation system that is vacuum operated. Well, the big thing under the hood, that would be the engine. We're starting to introduce to you some of the hoses. And yes, they are made of plastic. Of course, I'm gonna have to show you the check valve the vacuum reservoir, and a vacuum-operated mode selector. There they are, the vacuum hoses. There's a whole bunch of them underneath the hood. Unfortunately, many of them for the emission control devices, but we know how to narrow it down, where our AC lines go in. You'll begin by doing an inspection. Hoses deteriorate. There, you look very closely, these plastic lines crumble. This is a check valve. It's part of the ventilation system. This check valve has replaced this vacuum reservoir. You have to understand, because the system operates off of engine vacuum, and that changes with engine load, that's a little low for vacuum. When we accelerate, let's start with the, the yellow arrow. That would be number 12, the engine. The engine, when you accelerate, the vacuum is going to drop. And that's why we have to have a check valve or a reservoir. If we're having a problem, during acceleration, if you accelerate, this happens, folks. I'm not making it up. The air comes out the wrong place. It works most of the time. But if you accelerate heavily, all of a sudden the air starts coming out the wrong place. It usually has to do with the check valve. The check valve maintains vacuum. Here's a good image of a vacuum mode switch. There's a vacuum lines going to this, and this is how we control it. Here's the check valve. There's some hoses. All of this, if you're having any kind of problem with the ventilation system, this is a good place to start inspecting. But of course, you don't want to look at all the hoses. You want to look at the hoses <laughs> that relate to the subject you're trying to repair. There they are. There's another example. Here they have that uh, reservoir and they have the, the hoses going to them. One more thing about the check valve, yes, they do give out. And the big symptom, the huge symptom, it works okay, the ventilation system works okay, but when you accelerate heavily, 
the air starts coming out the wrong place for a little while, then comes back. It's the check valve. These guys don't last forever. When you replace these, pay attention, they are directional. If you install them wrong, it doesn't work. This is an 06 Toyota Tundra. It's an example of old fashioned system. My Toyota uses 100 year old technology, non-electrical, non-electronic, no vacuum devices, simple, trouble free, easy to diagnose, worky, 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 not like other stuff. My Toyota and other Asian vehicles and some. This is actually making a comeback now. This used to be real old. We're talking about cable operated ventilation system. Some of it, all of it, it is cable operated. Sometimes one, sometimes two. The doors in the very beginning, a hundred years ago. Yes, the doors were cable operated. Some, deal, some motor companies still use that. And if I understand correctly, yes, this is making a comeback. Instead of the electrical ones, I know some of the GMs are starting to use cable. They're very reliable. So how many types so far? Well, we identified the electrical, which includes the electronics. We identified the vacuum. We just went over the cable. What's left? One more GM junk, a combination of electrical and vacuum. Great. Yes, they have a combination. It does use vacuum, but it also uses about a lot of electrical. I think this is a good place to stop. Dun, dun, 